bugs. Last week we learned how Israel was divided into two kingdoms because of Solomon's sin and then who the kings of these two kingdoms were. The bottom two tribes of Israel were known as Judah and Solomon's son Rehoboam was king over the bottom two tribes. And then the upper ten tribes of Israel who was known as Israel their king was King Jeroboam, who was one of Solomon's workers. Now, both of these kings were disobedient to God. Can you remember the idols that Jeroboam made to make worship for Israel easier so that they don't have to go to Jerusalem and the temple anymore? The golden calves. Now, before we listen further to today's, today's lesson, we're first going to sing a song, Our God is the Awesome God. One of the kings in Israel after Jeroboam was King Ahab. The Bible says he did more evil things than all the kings before him. He was married to Jezebel, an evil woman that wasn't an Israelite. They worshipped idols and they also encouraged the Israelites to worship Baal, who was the idol or the false god of storms and rain. And they also tried to kill all of God's prophets because of their sin there was a drought in Israel for three and a half years. But God used the prophet Elijah to show the people that he alone was God. Let's look at the story about Elijah and the prophets of Baal. King Ahab and his evil queen Jezebel have led Israel astray by worshipping other gods. The land is gripped by a terrible drought. While the prophets of God have been under siege by Jezebel's orders to kill them, the worship of Baal has flourished. Elijah, God's prophet, demands to see Ahab. Ahab went to meet Elijah, and when he saw him, Ahab shouted, There you are, the biggest troublemaker in Israel! Elijah answered, You're the troublemaker, not me. You and your family have disobeyed the Lord's commands by worshipping Baal. Call together everyone from Israel and have them meet me on Mount Carmel. Be sure to bring along the 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets of Asherah who eat at Jezebel's table. Ahab got everyone together. Then they went to meet Elijah on Mount Carmel. Elijah stood in front of them and said, How much longer will you try to have things both ways? If the Lord is God, worship him. But if Baal is God, worship him. The people did not say a word. Then Elijah continued, I am the Lord's only prophet, but Baal has 450 prophets. Bring us two bulls. Baal's prophets can take one of them, kill it and cut it into pieces. Then they can put the meat on the wood without lighting the fire. I will do the same thing with the other bull, and I won't light a fire under it either. The prophets of Baal will pray to their God, and I will pray to the Lord. The one who answers by starting the fire is God. That's a good idea, everyone agreed. Elijah said to Baal's prophets, There are more of you, so you go first. Pick out a bull and get it ready, but don't light the fire. Then pray to your God. They chose their bull. Then they got it ready and prayed to Baal all morning, asking him to start the fire. They danced around the altar and shouted, Answer us, Baal! But there was no answer. At noon, Elijah began making fun of them. Pray louder, he said. Baal must be a god. Maybe he's daydreaming or, or using the toilet or, or traveling somewhere. Or maybe he's asleep and you have to wake him up. 
The prophets kept shouting louder and louder, and they cut themselves with swords and knives until they were bleeding. This was the way they worshipped, and they kept it up all afternoon. But there was no answer of any kind. Elijah told everyone to gather around him while he repaired the Lord's altar. Then he used 12 stones to build an altar in honor of the Lord. Each stone stood for one of the tribes of Israel, which was the name the Lord had given to their ancestor Jacob. Elijah dug a ditch around the altar, large enough to hold about 13 quarts. He placed the wood on the altar. Then they cut the bull into pieces and laid the meat on the wood. He told the people, fill four large jars with water and pour it over the meat and the wood. After they did this, he told them to do it two more times. They did exactly as he said, until finally the water ran down the altar and filled the ditch. When it was time for the evening sacrifice, Elijah prayed, Our Lord, you are the God of Abraham, Isaac and Israel. Now prove that you are the God of this nation and that I, your servant, have done this at your command. Please answer me so that these people will know that you are the Lord God and that you will turn their hearts back to you. The Lord immediately sent fire and it burned up the sacrifice, the wood, and the stones. It scorched the ground everywhere around the altar and dried up every drop of water in the ditch. When the crowd saw what had happened, they all bowed down and shouted, The Lord is God! The Lord is God! Just then, Elijah said, Grab the prophets of Baal! Don't let any of them get away! So the people captured the prophets and took them to the Kishon River, where Elijah killed every one of them. On Mount Carmel was the people of Israel together with the 850 prophets of Baal and Ashtaroth, who were idols, and also then King Ahab and Elijah. So it was more than 850 against one. Elijah told the people that they can't serve both the Lord God and Baal, but they had to choose whom they will serve. The people didn't even answer Elijah. This was now almost like a contest to see who is the true God. Each group would build an altar and put an ox on it. Then they would pray and the God who answers with fire would show he is the true God. The prophets of Baal tried hard and prayed, Oh Baal, answer us! But nothing happened. Elijah mocked Baal and his prophets because he knew that Baal did not exist. Then it was Elijah's turn. He made it even more difficult by digging a ditch around the altar and then three times they poured water with four cans or jars over the altar. Our friends, let's quickly think about this. Can wet wood burn? Let's see. No, it doesn't want to burn. Can rocks burn? Rocks also can't burn. For wood to burn, it needs to be dry. And Elijah wanted to make it very difficult for the altar and the offering on it to burn. Now let's hear what Elijah prayed in 1 Kings 18 verse 36b to 39. O Lord God of Abraham, Isaac and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant and that I have done all these things at your word. Answer me, O Lord, answer me that this people may know that you, O Lord, are God, and that you have turned their hearts back. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt offering, and the wood, and the stones, and the dust, and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and said, The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. God showed that he is the only true God. Even the rocks on the altar were burnt up. The people repented. 
Elijah commanded that all the prophets of Baal had to be killed because they were evil idol worshippers and they deceived Israel. After this, Elijah went to pray and God sent a lot of rain after three and a half years of drought. God showed through fire and rain that ye and not Baal is God and he has power over everything. What do we learn today? First, there is only one true God and there is no one like him. Often we want to serve God but also keep the idols in our lives. Idols like television, sports, toys, riches, friends or anything that takes all of our time and desire and attention and thoughts. We need to repent from this. Ask God for forgiveness and trust in Jesus alone so that we can fear God and obey and worship him. Secondly, we need to warn others through the gospel of Jesus Christ against their sin and their idolatry. Otherwise, God's judgment over their sin waits for them, as well as an eternity in hell. Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, help us to worship you alone and not to have idols in our lives. Help us also to warn others. In Jesus' name, Amen. It's time to learn a new memory verse. Today we'll look at 1 Kings 18 verse 37. Answer me, O Lord, answer me, that this people may know that you, O Lord, are God, and that you have turned their hearts back. This will sound familiar to you because this is what the prophet Elijah prayed just before the Lord consumed his altar with fire. We're going to practice it once more and then Aunt Claudine will teach you the moves to the verse. One, two, three. One Kings 18 verse 37. Answer me, O Lord. Answer me that this nation may know that you, O Lord, are God and that you have turned their hearts back. Thank you. 